Our initial fear about the Elder Scrolls Online was probably shared by a lot of fans of the franchise. Could an MMO really capture the spirit of open world adventure that we'd grown to love in the Elder Scrolls series? After some 60 hours of playtime and over 60 levels split between different characters, we can now give the concrete and unqualified answer to that most pressing question. Sort of? The Elder Scrolls Online takes place during the Interregnum, a rocky part of Tamriel's timeline. Not only are all the continent's factions vying for power, but a Daedric prince named Molag Bal is attempting to fuse his slice of oblivion, Cold Harbor, with the mortal plane. Luckily, this opens the door for an enterprising young adventurer and several million of his closest friends to set things right. You begin the game by choosing one of four classes, but once you're in, you have a lot of freedom to push your character whatever direction you want. Want your magic using powerhouse to also wear heavy armor? Go ahead. You want your beefy dragon knight to learn how to heal allies? Yep, that's allowed. While this freedom to take a character in any direction is intoxicating, it's also just plain toxic as the game progresses and gets more difficult. That's especially true in group dungeons, which demand a level of specialization in healing or tanking that most players just haven't invested in. Where Zenimax Online has really nailed the Elder Scrolls experience is in its scale. Even after days of playtime, we still feel like we've seen just a fraction of the world. Tamriel is absolutely massive. But that scale also brings with it a fair amount of repetition. Though there's a ton of really beautiful geographical variety, architecture is frequently reused, providing an unnerving sense of deja vu. There's a fair amount of repetition in Quest too, but they're interspersed with some excellent one-off adventures that would be right at home in a traditional Elder Scrolls game. Slowing down to read the text for each quest frequently pays off with some surprising twists and even a few laughs. The impact of those great quests is muted just a bit by the unavoidable side effect of playing an MMO. All the people. Finding the right combination of mystical lights to open a chest is a lot less cool with seven other players galloping in circles as they work on the same puzzle. Boss battles at the end of quest lines are robbed of their drama when three other players swarm in and kill the target. We know this is par for the course with most MMOs, almost all of which require you to willfully ignore the many other players having the same unique adventure as you. That's how MMOs work. But it has not, to this point, been how Elder Scrolls games work. Moreover, the trade-offs for having other players horn in on your adventure action just aren't that satisfying. The world's economy, for example, is really unwieldy. While the crafting systems are robust and easier to get into than many MMOs, the game has no traditional auction house system for buying or selling your goods. The only solution is to join a trading guild, which has a smaller pool of players and extremely limited search functionality. Trade items also have a tendency to clog your bag, necessitating frequent bank visits and inventory management that make them feel more like a chore. That lack of an auction house also means that chat channels are practically choked by players looking to buy and sell goods, giving ESO's main means of player communication all the charm of a Kmart loudspeaker. These strange choices ostensibly serve a single purpose, encouraging community. It's noble enough in concept, but it ignores most of the progress that the genre has made towards usability in the last five years. We approached Elder Scrolls Online as fans of the series and as MMO lovers, but it came up short from both perspectives. A lot of effort has clearly been spent turning Bethesda's series into something that feels like other MMOs, but it never quite figures out a way to surpass them.